Hello everyone, welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on China's television. I'm Sean Wakimale in Apuja. We begin or we continue with our countdown. It's almost 50 days now since the indefinite strike action of the university lecturers in the federal public schools in Nigeria. The university lecturers down tools because they've not come to agreement with the federal government on several demands that they've put on the table. And we are appealing as much as Nigerians are also that for the sake of the students who have been idle for the past weeks, that they should come to the negotiating table and have a way forward. I think that's a reasonable thing to do for the sake of our nation. It's become a national embarrassment instead of education and the strike action by the university lecturers. Let's tell you about what happened in the early hours of today. After just a few hours after the channel's television governorship debate in Oshun State, one of the governorship candidates who stood on the podium, the Labour Party candidate and the former Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Right Honorable Lassun Yusuf, has been recounting his ordeal when attackers stormed his home at about 2 a.m., shooting sporadically. Police authorities have intervened and are investigating the matter. According to the former Deputy Speaker, he says there was a plan to eliminate him. Take a listen to the former Deputy Speaker. There have been persistent warning over my life in the last two months. Very, very persistent. Very, very persistent. And in fact, it got to a stage that I, I became scared. But because I just believe life, we have to live it. But the, the warning has been coming from different angles persistently in the last two months. And the follow-up to that, while the warnings have been receiving from different angles on an attempt that, that was likely to be made on my life. As a deputy speaker, and uh, the, a former deputy speaker of the House of Reps and the Labour Party candidate in Ocean State. It's just about five days to the poll there. Of course, you know, China's television will be on the ground. We have everything covered for you. All of the new can crannies of that state we will come to give you the coverage that you desire as far as that election is concerned. And don't forget the coverage like never before as far as the governorship election is concerned. We'll be reporting on some of the result as been collected by INEC in real time using the electronic uh, result analysis dashboard, an initiative between China's television and Yaga Africa. Look forward to that on election day coverage on Saturday, the 16th of July, 2022. For what the President Muhammad Abouri said today, and it's got our attention, it's about the state of affairs of the nation. He's, uh, he's trying his best. He's doing what he can to fix the problems of the country. But he has come out to say he's eager to leave office and has wished the next president luck. Well, we'll dwell on that for a moment and we'll get to hear also from the president. He's spoken about Asu Strike. What did he say? We get to hear. And of course, the Muslim Muslim ticket has been a major, major issue since Balatinobu, the presidential candidate of the APC, announced his running mate, a former Bronu State governor and a sitting senator Bronu State, Senator Kashim Shatima. A lot of people were talking and reacting to this matter. That also gets our attention. Stay with me, everyone. First and foremost, we need to get you up to date with some of your political roundup stories. The leadership of the All Progressives Congress, APC, has decried the low turnout of people for the ongoing voter registration in Daura Emirates of Katsina State. Daura Emirates in Katsina State comprises of five local government areas, namely Baure, Mayadua, Sandamu, Zango, and Daura local government areas. Worried with the situation, the APC National Legal Advisor, Mr. Ahmed El Mazouk, tasked party leaders and all the key stakeholders in the Emirates to mobilize themselves and their followers to get registered to ensure that they vote for the victory of APC at all levels come 2023. 
The governor of Taraba State, Mr. Darius Ishaku, is optimistic that the recruitment of more hands into security agencies across the country will greatly reduce the spate of insecurity. Speaking at the passing out parade of 191 new recruits of the NSCDC in Jalingo, the Taraba State Capital, the special advisor to Governor Ishaku on special duties says total compliance with the oath of secrecy is key to fighting crime in the country. The Cross River State Governor, Professor Ben Ayade, has sworn in Honorable Justice Samson Mbe Anjo as the president of the customary court of appeal. He also swore in permanent secretaries and a clerk with a charge for effective delivery of justice in their line of duties, speaking after the swearing in exercise at the state executive chamber in Calabar. The governor explained that such a promotion is deserving, considering their impact in the society. It is a very life changing opportunity. I'm aware that some people who have been sworn in have less than a month in office. But I do so because I know the cumulative impact and the significance of this promotion at this time. As Muslims around the world mark the Eid al-Kabir celebration, the Imo state governor Hope Uzadima says the security challenges facing the nation can be resolved to a reasonable extent if Nigerians can put aside religious differences and believe that both Christians and Muslims serve the same God. Governor Uzadima disclosed this at a lunch meeting with the Muslim community in Imo state at the government house in Oweri, the Imo state capital, in commemoration of the Eid al-Kabir celebration of Muslim faithful. The level of insecurity will be better managed. If we know that it's the same God we are serving, and wherever you find yourself, whatever you are or whatever you have, that it is only possible because it is the grace of God that made that to happen. And the Bishop of the Anglican Diocese of Calabar, right, Reverend Noe Igbe, has condemned the idea of a Muslim-Muslim or Christian-Christian ticket for the 2023 presidential election. Speaking in Calabar during a press briefing to mark the second session of the 11th Synod of the Diocese, the Bishop emphasized that having a Muslim-Muslim or Christian-Christian ticket is a platform for injustice to thrive. We absolutely do not, will not, and cannot accept a Muslim-Muslim ticket or a Christian Christian ticket. Thank you so much everyone for staying with us. So a few activities uh, I mean have happened today in Dara in Katsina, so that's the home country of President Muhammad Buhari, where he's observing the holidays and the Eid uh, Fetri celebration. Now, governors of the APC had visited the president, but one thing uh, that uh, gets our attention first and foremost is what the president has said as far as uh, the ASU strike is concerned. First and foremost, the president is calling on the Academy Staff Union of University to reconsider their position on the pro long strike, expressing worry that the haters will have generational consequences on families, the educational system, and future development of the country. And this is what the president said, quote, we hope that ASU will sympathize with the people on the prolonged strike. Truly enough is enough for keeping students at home. Don't hurt the next generation for goodness sake. Those are the words of President Muhammad Buhari. Beyond that, the president is also speaking on the state of the nation. Now, the president has said, I wish the person who is coming after me the very best. He went further to say, I am eager to go. I can tell you it has been tough. I'm grateful to God that people appreciate the personal sacrifices we have been making. End of quote. That is a position of the president. Well, of course, a lot of activities happened uh, there. That gets our attention in a moment because we'll be trying to get a sense of what the president meant by that. And of course, um, how these will directly, impl uh, implications directly or indirectly on the average citizen. I'm being joined by the um, Special Assistant, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Mr. Garbo Shehu, who joins us from Dara and Katsina State. Thank you so much, Mr. Shehu, for joining us tonight. Uh, give us a sense, first and foremost, when the President says he's eager sure. to go, um, is it a statement of frustration of the state of the nation and the handling of this, uh, the Buhari government of the state of affairs? 
No, I, I, I'm not uh, sure the reading is correct. Uh, certainly the president is not uh, frustrated about anything. The president uh, has been chosen to serve for a given term of office. And uh, this is a president who has uh, clearly making a lot of personal sacrifices to serve the nation. And uh, so, yeah, it is not a bad idea that he looks, you know, to the end of the term. So that uh, also matters that are personal uh, can also get his attention, family and all of that. So, but the president uh, has given his best to the country and will continue to do so until the last minute. And I think it is clear from the speech uh, this morning. So, I mean, for those who will say, let me list a few of the issues to you. As to strike, there are long few queues. You can see in Abuja, I don't know if uh, it exists in Dara, in Katsina State. In Lagos, there are long queues of fuel causing several hours of traffic gridlock. Now, and also, people will talk about the price of commodities. These are some of the issues that Nigerians are battling with. And perhaps when the president comes to say, I'm eager to go, what about the promises he made to Nigerians? They will be asking, um, you were eager to, to, to come into office. Have you fixed those problems? Those are some of the issues that some, of the, some Nigerians will be asking. And you look at it, just an hour drive to the presidential villa is Kuje where Boko Haram element invaded the correctional facilities there, setting free about 64 Boko Haram leaders and members. Now, the question is security, anti-corruption. These are the issues and the promises that uh, the government and President Buhari made to, to, to Nigerians. When he says he's eager to go, the question is, has he resolved those problems he promised to, to solve? He has solved the problems uh, substantially. Uh, look at uh, all of the things that have happened. Uh, when he came in, the real epicenter of those crises was the Northeast. Northeast is a lot, a lot more peaceful today than it was. And the South South, where even the mining of oil, which is the backbone of the nation's economy, had become almost impossible. Again, calm has been restored to to the South South. New challenges have arisen. All of these things you have mentioned, we don't deny that there is hardship in the country, but so also is there difficulty in all parts of the world. In any case, this is expected. Leaders across the globe are being lashed at by their publics for all of these things that have happened arising from the lockdown, the COVID lockdown, rising from the, the supply chain difficulties. Don't forget that all of this petroleum, much of it that we consume, is brought in from outside the country. So all of these things have been impacted upon by Russia, Ukraine, food supplies, and thank God for the enormous vision of the president, the massive agricultural program that he launched, that we eat, grow what we eat, and eat what we grow. Look. A lot of countries are in turmoil. Look at what is going on in Sri Lanka. We don't even go far. Our own Ghana here. Look, there are countries, if care is not taken, they will go under, including some on the continent of Africa. Because food is unavailable. There is no money to import fuel. There's no money to import food. And even the money is, when the money is there for food, countries are fencing off. Countries are barring export. For food items. So, yes, there are challenges here, but when we have a global view of what is going on, there will be, better, there is, there will be more sympathy for the leaders of this country than currently is the case. So, the president has substantially succeeded in all of these elements that you have mentioned, anti-corruption, even if it is by changing the tone, the moral environment, which is different. Now, it is how people accept that it is wrong that they take bribe or they offer it. Before now, people hadn't had this idea in a lot of places. It was seen as normative. Corruption was seen as being part of life and you had to be part of it. But, and you're mentioning all of these things about the kidnappers and all of that the people have been taken. 
and and the president even in his cellar message there was the appeal he was making to fellow citizens expose them tell the security agencies where they are and, and sometimes you also can sympathize with family members in that highly emotive situation the first priority for many of them gets that family back home and they're willing to pay and they've been paid and these payments whether anybody likes it or not will continue to fuel terrorism. We have to learn from experiences in other lands that when you pay, you are, you are fueling terrorism, you are fueling the hijack and kidnap of fellow citizens. And it will go on and on and on until simply people call off the bluff and, and be prepared to allow law enforcement. But to I, do I don't know how this will sit with um, some of the families, uh, children, wives, and far husbands of some of those who are in captivity. But perhaps let me flash back your mind, Mr. Shewu, to this situation in 2015, and perhaps some of the statements being made. And Nigerians will also want to know, maybe there is something uh, unique about the problems of Nigeria, Nigeria that is um, eluding solution uh, from the statement of the president that if, if you have come into a house and you thought you can resolve the problem and you are not able to resolve it, you are quick to leave the, to the, to, to, to leave the building or leave the scene, perhaps that is the circumstance of the scenario that is playing out. Now, before now, what the APC had told Nigerians before 2015 was that there are Boko Haram attacks in the city of Abuja, police headquarters, the United Nations building, the critics of this government will say, we've seen that play out again in the last few weeks when Boko Haram elements have attacked uh, Kujé prison. One hour away from, uh, from the villa, 25 minutes away from the airport. Now, people will say, in the northwest region of the country, we've not seen this state of insecurity where in Kaduna State, where these elements have now found it comfortable. They even attacked a train headed for Abuja. That is an assault on the security architecture of this country. These are some of the things that the government of the APC both said that they were going to fix, and some Nigerians were very excited about the feeling of fixing some of this problem. Can you give us an insight whether or not there is something that Nigerians need to know that the problems of Nigeria is eluding solution? Is there something that the president has discovered that we do not know? No, uh, I think that uh, Sheung, what needs to be done is uh, for you, especially the communications uh, experts and all of the citizens to accept that there is no society no country that has zero level of criminality. There will be occasional breaches and infiltration. And you mentioned Kujé prison. Kujé prison is hot, is new, and I accompanied the president and I saw what he felt about all of these things. And I think that in all fairness, let's allow the investigation to be complete. From the numbers they gave him, you had nearly 60 of our security agents armed with weapons. Was there any evidence of a fight back or attempt to protect the facility? So I think that it is better for the investigation to be thorough and to be complete. And these things about the spread of attacks to parts of the Northwest had sufficiently over time be explained by the security, the defense headquarters in particular. You had the Boko Haram who had found the North is too hot for them. And they had run away and infiltrated some parts of, of the Northwest. And it is also true that in a number of instances, again, communities needed to do more in terms of exposure. Because the soldiers under the Nigeria Armed Forces, the, the, the military men and the policemen, we have a federal you know, security set up. Some of them may have come from Bayelsa or Ogun or Inuku, and you say, take a gun and go to Sokoto or Kebi and do this work. They probably don't even have an idea. They have to look at the map to see where is Kebi and Sokoto and, and, and all of that. So they need to be guided, they need to be helped. But you have situations where 
clearly, even some governments have seen clear ins instances of breach. In fact, if care is not taken, some of these things, they will go on and on and on because when you identify a particular ethnic group and you tag them as being terrorists and bandits, and you go after them, they go to market to buy and sell. And the moment some of them are seen, they are attacked and they killed. And then there is a fight back by members of their community. They come back, they say, we have been attacked by social community. We will. So, and there is no patience on the part of most people to go through the due process of the law. Otherwise, given patience, given confidence in civil authority, that's why we have the court system in the country. And the courts should be allowed to do their duty and meet out punishment. They have their challenges as well. But I believe that if punishment is meted out and, and seen to be done, people will have, and, and quickly so, there will be a lot more confidence that people will have in the system and this thing about self-help will certainly be reduced. What I was trying to, scenario I was trying to paint is um, uh, for someone who is asking for a job or a contractor who is asked that, get me the job, I'm going to do it. That is the scenario we had with President Buhari and the APC. When you were asking for the job, you said, give us the, na the nation and we will fix it. We are capable of fixing it. Yeah. That is a promise yeah. we made to Nigerians. And I'm uh, yeah. wondering whether or not, when the president says, is eager to go, whether Nigerians will be disappointed, what do you feel? How Nigerians will react or will take the statement of the president that what you promised to do, have you achieved it? Have you done it? You cannot go without giving us what you are, what you, I mean, what you said you are going to do. What are you, do you think Nothing. Nigerians are, and how do you think Nigerians will react to the statement of the president? Considering what you well, promised and forget. what you have delivered. Don't forget that the president is speaking against the background of the political system, or should I call it political leadership, that had shown greed on matters of succession and over ambition. In the last 19 or so, in fact, in the past, in, in all of these years, we have practiced this democracy from 2019. We had seen Persuaders come before our very eyes and tell us that leaders should not go. Term limits are not, should not, and a, a nuisance and they should be eliminated. We have seen people on deathbed and willing to go. Persuaders are saying, no, they will keep power until they go to the grave. I mean, these are the situation. Buhari wants to make the point that I'm not here to stay a day beyond my term of office and be sure that there will be an election. And he keep going back to the issue of saying that he hadn't done the job. No, please look at what the facts on the ground are showing. He came in 2015, the Boko Haram had a territory the size of Belgium with a flag system of administration and taxation that, that was unique to themselves. They call it a caliphate. They don't command that kind of place in this country anymore. So much has been achieved. Our worry all the time is that people forget where we are coming from. And I was just uh, reading an earlier editorial uh, yesterday. A given newspaper was talking about our country going back to 2015. And we're saying to them that in 2015, you had all manner of barricades around your office. And you had heavy security. Now all of that has disappeared. Because you are safer. You are operating in a safer environment. You have forgotten where you are coming from. And this is why you are saying nothing has been achieved. But otherwise, the example begins with you. And it is all around us. So people are just not being fair when they cling on to some of these things. And then they begin. And of course, for President Muhammad Buhari, we fully appreciate that. For many in the opposition, President Muhammad Buhari has this enormous personality, enormous image upon which even his political party, the APC, is counted. So why don't we go after it? Why don't we diminish him? And that's the whole. It's a, it's a cancel campaign. 
that people are launching against Mahmoud Buhari and they will not succeed. Because the masses, 20 million of Nigerian poor are on social investment program of the government. Whether they are eating food in schools, whether they are getting uh, 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 pay, pay at the end of this month, at the end of the month, or one form of social investment or the other in the many programs that have been put in place. Those are the voters. Yeah, before Not the, the half hour, I, I'd like to take you up on uh, one more matter where the president uh, raised the issue. So, I mean, from what you said, uh, some Nigerians who are listening to you tonight will be wondering whether or not uh, Mr. Shewu is feeling exactly the same thing they're feeling. So some of them who live in, uh, uh, who, who apply the Kaduna Abuja Express Road, or some of them whose family members have been in Kajuru. Uh, for some of uh, that have been attacked, and some of them who have lost their homes in Benue, and in some other part of the country will be asking whether or not Mr. Shewu is in the same Nigeria as them, and perhaps whether you go into the same market to to buy food stuff compared to 2015 that you have made mention of but let's go into the issue of ASU strike is it fair mr Shehu, when it does look like the president has accused or um made the federal government sort of a victim in this matter of ASU. he says we hope that ASU will sympathize with the people on the prolonged strike truly enough is enough for keeping students at home do not hurt the next next generation for goodness sake Asu has said it repeatedly that the federal government is insincere and as far as they are concerned, they're ready to go back to work, but it's the federal government that is at fault. Is it fair for the, the president to make this statement? Okay, let me go back because I won't let that pass. I'm a Nigerian, I have family members, I live in the society, I don't come from the moon. I feel it. I have never in any way suggested that there's no hardship in the country. I've never in any place opposition indicated that there is zero crime. No, I did say from the beginning of the program, infiltrations and breaches, and sometimes even sabotage can happen. So uh, let's please uh, agree that there are problems, but the government is working to, the pro uh, to solve the problems, and the president's assurance is that he is going to live behind a safer country than he had met. Give him that benefit of the doubt. As for us, the president has a right, is entitled to appeal on behalf of Nigerians. This is six months or more of this ongoing strike. And you, is it right for anyone to insist on taking 100% of all of those grievances that they have? Don't forget that really at the, at the heart of all of these problems is a 2009 agreement between the then government which incompetently signed into an agreement that they had no capacity to deliver upon, and they have passed it on from one government to, the, to another. You might even ask the question, so why is Buhari being held by the neck? What happened in the past? Why didn't they strangle those past administrations on these matters? That's our worry. But uh, quickly, just before we go, Mr. Shew, if ASU says they are ready to call off the strike on the part of the president or the part of the federal government, is the federal government ready to make sure that that same position is being arrived at? Will the federal government will be able to yield or, I mean, concede to ASU so that this strike action will be called off? It's almost 50 days. I don't, I don't have the numbers. But I want to believe that there is so much substance that has been put on the table by the federal government. Did the federal government yield 100% of all of their demands? I will not say this. And is it even reasonable that you expect 100% of everything you ask for? Look, there are also other sectors of the economy that are yearning for attention. The military, they need weapons, they need guns to go and fight terrorists. We have to attend to all sectors of the economy. And these resources available to the nation, how just to go, they just have to go around hospitals, schools, and all of that. And no assurances as of tonight. Well, the Minister of State Education is in the news, has given assurance that that they are about to turn the corner and all of the issues are about to be resolved. Let's pray. We have reached this point in the past. My hope and prayer is that it will soon be ended. 
and please, as the president did say, they have family members, they have leaders in our communities, prevail upon them. Let them resume the classes. Those elements that have not been resolved, they can still be talked over and resolved. Mr. Garbasho, thank you so much for uh, sparing time. Uh, albeit, uh, it was a late invitation to the program, and you still made it on. Thank you so much indeed for coming yeah. tonight. Um, I you. never, I mean, I never wish that uh, as a strike of this magnitude will go on. I personally experienced it when I was in university uh, very many years ago, and uh, now that is happening again to how many generations after? So we hope that all of this is resolved as fast as possible. We'll take a break, everyone. But when we return, our attention will be on the state of the nation, of course, for what the president said. And of course, we'll also discuss the pairing of Bola Ahmed Tinubu, a former governor of Lagos State, a Muslim. Kashim Shetima, a former Bruno State governor, a Muslim, who are now the pairings or the flag bearers of the APC for the presidential race. We look at the pros and the cons in this matter. Stay with me, everyone. The conversation just got started. We'll be right back. Let me allow you to listen for yourself the soundbite of President Muhammad Buhari speaking about the lingering indefinite strike action by university lecturers of the Federal University. Take a listen to him. Come to realize that um, the issue of being comfortable depends on your personal appreciation of what you are doing. If you are greedy, you don't look at uh, what you benefited before. You always look up. Uh, and that keeps you uh, being unmindful of those below you that are struggling for one or two meals a day. We will thank God that uh, we have arrived at this position. We lead our constituencies. And uh, our constituencies are very happy in the sense that they can at least feed themselves. And I hope that the institutions we have, like ASU, will sympathize with the country and the people. There's nothing wrong with showing the government and uh, leadership that you don't like what they are doing. But enough is enough. Well, enough is enough. That's what the president said. The ASU says they will call off the strike. In fact, they're ready to go back to the classrooms. They are alleging that several of their colleagues have not been paid several months of uh, due salaries. Now, the question is, where will enough be enough? Is it whether the federal government comes to terms with ASU or not? Uh, we'll continue to see what happens. Now, there are all those who have visited the president, including the APC governors. And after their meeting, they are assuring that they will win for the APC at least 22 states of the Federation in the presidential race. The governors of the APC have thrown their weight behind the Tunubu Shatima pairing as the presidential flag bearers of the APC after their meeting with President Buhari today in Dara, where they paid a homage to him for Salah. Take a listen to one of the governors who spoke on behalf of his colleagues of the APC. Of course, it's a collective decision. So all those uh, talks about the combination, you're not bothered? I didn't hear of any talk. <laughs> How confident are you? We are with there. 22 governors will deliver 22 states because they have done very, very well. All right. So since that happened, there's been a lot of reactions. In fact, one member of the APC was spoken very loudly about the party, Daniel Boala has since left the party because of that decision that there is a Muslim Muslim pair. And a lot of people who are speaking, Edwin Clark has spoken up about this matter. And in fact, we've heard Senate President Ahmed Lawan, who has also spoken on behalf of uh, himself, uh, the APC Northeast Caucus. And this is what he said about the Shatima Tinubu pairing. Uh, quote, Ashwaju Tinubu and our party have made an excellent choice in Senator Shatima. Well, 
The Bono politics is also <laughs> another in intrigues are happening. Now, there's been rumors about Senator Ali Modusha, the former governor who's, uh, who preceded, um, um, who was succeeded by uh, Kashim Shatima, Senator Ali Modusheri, who was being said to have uh, left the APC because of the choice of Balatunubu of uh, Shatima, but he's come out to deny it and say no. In fact, Shatima, he was one of the first persons Kashim Shatima spoke to on this particular ticket, and he has denied leaving the APC. In all of this, the PDP is already attacking the APC, saying, look, your choice will bring your downfall in the election. Tonight, let's look at these issues and what this benefits the average voter and the, the Nigerian public in general. I'm being joined by Mr. Klatus Obum, a former lawmaker and a chieftain of the APC, and also uh, Mr. Uh, Anthony Hehilaba, a lawyer and a member of the PDP. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on. Thank you for having Thanks for having us. A lot of intrigues, a lot of reactions have trailed the decision of your party, especially the presidential candidate on the choice of Mr. Kashim Shatima, Senator Shatima, as the running mate. Do you think this is more of a disadvantage for your party, the Muslim Muslim together idea? Because that is exactly what everybody's talking about. Well, Nigeria is a very complex and heterogeneous community in which religion is the heart of the people. It is it's a major deciding factor and, in fact, uh, interplays with relationships, even at the personal level. And our present security situation, which appears to have a sectarian and religious coloration, has not helped the issue of faith-based beliefs and actions and reactions. And that is why the decision of Muslim Muslim or Christian Muslim, even if they had taken a Muslim or a Christian from the north, it would have been the issue of where did they take it from. Because, I mean, this is a political decision. There is no way. I mean, imagine the PDP. They took a Christian from the south, from the south-south, and see the ripples. We have not they have not recovered from it. So it is a political decision. No political decision ever taken by any human anywhere can ever go without this type of reactions. So for me, it is normal. It is now the duty of APC to explain itself to the, in the campaigns and in the days to come. And that is why our best media team, our best public relations team, must come out to manage the sensitivities that color and take decisions for our people. And of course, like I said, our present security situation has not helped that choice, but that does not in any way disadvantage the APC. It does not. It poses challenges, but it is not going to be a decider, because well, clearly that is where we are. Why is this some kind of uh, an item for partying for the PDP? Why does this look like a victory already for your party since the announcement of Senator Kashim Shetima? Well, sir, because I see a lot of the chieftains of your party and members of your party already getting happy, thinking that it's a bad choice, or the issue of Muslim, Muslim ticket is a bad choice. Well, why is it? Um, this conversation, I'll have it just once. Because I think um, from the start and from the indications, the, from the first time the yeah, candidate emerged on the surface, starting with the Emilio Khan phrase, uh, he has reduced the content and level of the conversation to topics and issues where we are discussing his age, we are discussing where he's from, and right now we're discussing religion uh, as, as a subject topic. Um, I'll first say the arrogance, uh, the context, the timing of picking a Muslim Muslim ticket at a time when we have high, a high level of insecurity in the country. It's high, very, very insensitive. It shows a lack of appreciation of where the country is at this point in time. But then again, look at the individual, someone who can reduce the conversation to himself that this presidency is all about him, Amy Lokan. That is, it is my presidency. So it doesn't matter to him what Nigerians feel, what anybody feels about it. I'm not one to want to delve uh, deeply into religion and, or ethnicity because I feel those are issues that have kept the Nigerian population on the wrong uh, frequency of conversations. I think we should take our conversations beyond that. But when you see individuals uh, of this uh, character delving or situating their politics around a religious direction, then you start to wonder what do we expect from this individual. And that's why you will see uh, Danabuala saying to himself, if this man can make this sort of decision, of course, 
Of course, from day one, with the way Kasim Shatima was carrying the campaign, you could tell that that was perhaps the choice of uh, the APC presidential candidate. But I know that he needed to uh, build some sort of wage, wages, like he said, get the best media team in front of the issue, knowing that it is an issue. He is has, he a bad thing? That's the right question I was asking. Well, for me, um, again, like I said, it reduces the competence of the conversation when we talk about religion, because it has no bearing on, I mean, you could have the best, uh, let me tell you something. In 2014, uh, President Muhammad Dubari, as much as we tend to push him to the bad side, resisted a Muslim Muslim ticket. Who did he come from? This same individual. So from 2014, he has already admired the idea of driving his politics on a religious basis. But that, again, reduces the competence of the conversation. For us as Nigerians right now, we're talking about security, we're talking about healthcare. And from day one, he has reduced that conversation to his age, where he's from, questionable uh, seizures in the US. That's what we have been discussing. We've not discussed the policies. We've not discussed his economic uh, regeneration plan for Nigeria. And, that's, and that takes us back to 2014, 15, where we had the same kind of conversation. We're talking about religion. We're talking about certificate. Instead of facing the issues, look at where it ended us up. In 2022, today, Nigeria is one of the worst, look in all the indices in Africa, in Nigeria, in the world. We are not doing, we're not anywhere. I'm surprised at the interview you were having with Gary Bashir who said that, and, and he having the country to say to, to Nigeria that Nigeria is safe. When the convoy, he, I remember, and, and reading, the, reading the, the presser after that convoy attack, it was the, the men of the media that he leads that were attacked. And he seems to think that he can tell Nigerians that, oh yes, all is well and fine. Again, we'll go back to the level and competence of the conversation. Look at what we are talking about. Look at what we are going to spend this evening talking about. Instead of looking at the, the, the policies, looking at the character of, okay, so let's even say that he decided, as he said, on competence. Are you trying to tell me Yakubu Dogara is not competent? Are you trying to tell me Boss Mustafa is not competent? There are several competent people in the APC, in the North, that are from the North, that are Christians. Why didn't he pick them? Or can like they I win an election for them? Look. Because we are, we are, if that I, is one of the concentration. At this point, I think the first message, if you look at immediately after the convention of the PDP, the first message Alaja Atikwa Baka gave out was that he's going to try and unify the country. Right now, what we need in Nigeria is that our fault lines have been widened along ethnic and religious lines. And it has been severely won. We're now sensitive to other people from other religions. So we must find a way oh, to, allow, to tell yeah. her this. Let yeah. me allow Mr. Yeah, because, uh, to when, uh, yes, because I can see a lot of pre-verification on these issues. First, we say we shouldn't reduce it to religion, which is what I agree with you on, because globally, globally, as we speak today, the issue of religion, I mean, if Islam was seen to be the violent religion that people tend to put it as, you wouldn't have had the mayor of London as a Muslim today, who just resigned. As we speak, a Nigerian, Bodenok, Kemi, is running for the prime ministership of, both parents are Nigerians, as we speak today. He's one of those ministers, Minister of Equality, that just resigned from the, from the cabinet of Boris Johnson. He's contesting for that position. He's a Nigerian, full-blooded. Both parents are Nigerian. He's contesting for that. Of course, you know what Biden has done across. So when it suits us, we pigeonhole our interests and begin to talk about Emilia Kong and that. Those are political jibes. The dryness, the drabness, the personalization of politics have made our politics so intense and so toxic that even the mere mention of a name becomes an issue. I will tell you, educated people, elites in my place, believe that Yakubu Dogara was a Muslim until I showed them that this man is a Christian. They did, just because they saw Yakubu, they, all of them just believed, just, how can Saraki, a Muslim, be a president of Senate? How can Yakubu Dogara, a Muslim, be speaker? Until I had, it took a lot of conviction for me to show that there. So if as at today, we have taken away ourselves, we will get there. These are the best banks of democracy. We will get the pains. Why of Why is the issue of Muslim Muslim ticket an issue at this time? Precisely, I have. I laid that foundation when I said our security situation, the presidency today, has not in any way done anything to show that anybody can be trusted. Because as we speak now, the present security challenges we have up to Abuja, like you said, one hour to Kuje. And somebody called me as I was coming to this. One of the prisoners who escaped, John Obeten, from Cross River State, who was, he said he escaped and laid on the gutter. He went to the police, reported himself. He's back in that prison now. 
John Obetem, as we speak now, he called me before I got into the studio to tell me that he has supported himself back and returned to the prison. Now, if that happened in the center of Abuja by the presidency, of course, don't believe that it is the worst. Because you remember that until Jonathan left office, he never went to Eagle Square anymore because of the bombings there and in Nyanya. He never came near Eagle Square again. Here in this very South, the former South headquarters here in Abuja, Boko, the first Boko Haram leaders that were held here were broken into exactly the same thing. So we are degenerating, yes. Like uh, Gabashe who admitted, no Nigerian living in this climate today will not say that we are living in a siege mentality. We are living with a siege mentality because of that religion has become an issue ordinarily. 30 years after Muslim Muslim ticket of, uh, of uh, uh, Abiola in 1993, 30 years, 2023, we are now quarreling with it. Are we retrogressing? Are we going back to Peacock's classification of civilization as coming from bronze to silver to gold? Now, at the golden, uh, where we should be enjoying the golden era, we are returning to the primitive stage, and we are now still discussing, like he said, back to religion and bringing down the temperature and the... Let, the, let, let, me, look at, let me look at this, since I have the representation of APC and PDP here, Atiku Abubakar and uh, Northeast region. Um, uh, yeah. Ifain Okowa, South South region. Those are the parents for the PDP. And uh, Bolatinobu, Southwest region. And uh, Kashim Shetima, Northeast region. Um, if the reaction we're getting from the PDP looks so much like they've won the election already, what, what does this pairing mean to you, for example, before I go to Anthony? Let me now tell you take our demographics, our electoral demographics at least in the last three sets of elections, between 2011, 2015, and 2019. And you will see where the figures play a role. And which is what, we are not dealing with chem a chemical laboratory where you have organic molecules moving in one direction. We are dealing with humans who are, in fact, susceptible to change and social impact, whose external forces acting upon them, acting in a particular way. As we speak now, can you tell me that any political actor would deliberately commit political harakiri or suicide by going to pick a candidate for the sake of appealing to the emotions and sentiments? So of is the pairing of the APC a winning ticket? That is precisely where we are. Because we are dealing with policies and winning before you can talk about talking about the policies you are dealing with. If you are talking about fixing water. For me, whether PDP or APC, any president coming out and pretending that he will fix roads, who will fix the roads when you cannot even stand on the road? When the security situation, let, who let, will go to school? Let who me allow Anthony. Yeah, let let me, sleep let in let let Anthony. So security, security, security must be the next agenda of any president coming, whether in PDP or APC. The pairing, why is your members of your party so happy? No, but because when you even talk about competence, so he's talking about security, security, security. We have forgotten that this same Shatima was the one in charge of security for Borno State when the Chibok girls when they were told not to go to school, a letter was written by then Minister for, uh, Supervising Minister for Education, uh, Yeson Wike, asking the governor not to send students to school. But he did, and sent them to school, and they were kidnapped. And this same governor, we know all the comments he has made, former governor, we know all the comments he has made, that he's talking about incompetence, about fighting insecurity. No, 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 they've made an error. They knew it was a big you problem for them. Is, uh, they knew they, where they knew, was, they, where all, is Borno in, today on the security in all, map? In all, where is Borno in all, today? In all, in all, where is Borno of what state has today? been said, in all of what has been said, it took them close to three weeks to announce a decision they had made a long time ago. And that tells you, and, and, and even after they made it, they said, like he issue. said, they are going to jump in front of it and use the media, use the best experts no, no, no. in the country to try media, and explain, you you and explain to Nigerians why now. you so arrogantly you use native doctors. The you use native to, doctors who use the media. You see, you, you must understand. You must understand. I understand why you are trying to filibust me here because you don't it's really have any, any no, no, points no, 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 no. to make to Nigerians as to why, why you, you didn't consider an election the, year. the why religious the temperature in the country. I'm telling you that Nigeria right now, the U.S. is threatening to remove Nigeria, a country that has a high threat level for Christians. Listen. For, this is not. For this, these are not issues we can wash under the. Under you are the not a spokesperson for America. These are issues that bother Nigeria. We, we, we need this to go, gentlemen. Not, not yeah. for America. Thank Speak you so Nigeria. much, gentlemen. Talk Nigeria. Yeah. What is happening in your state? Well, uh, as you can <laughs> see, uh, we have really... another case in our hands in which a lot of people are jumping ship and still wanting to retain, eating their cake. I want to have it in which today a federal house member just decamped to Labour Party 
And uh, like before, some they come from PDP to APC and still want the APC tickets, even when they are in court saying right. that they are not. So uh, I think that should be a topic for another day, if you permit it. <laughs> just we'll deal with that. APC. If you just raise that matter, PDP member. Why did I raise that matter again? It's a PDP member. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. PDP member living for a level party. Thank you so much. 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 But that's our show for today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sure I'll keep my Bye-bye.